for you. This is Transport for Christ. Sorry, we were unable to answer the phone. If it is important, please leave a message. My name's Chad Rodemo. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Transport for Christ, the Refuge Chapel. And we are here to try to win the drivers to Christ, but we're also here just to be a refuge for the drivers that they can come in and feel comfortable to pray for, to talk to, just to be a friend for them. The drivers, it's hard to get them to come in here. Now, the drivers know what this place is. For a driver to walk up them steps, they really need or want to come in here. This is what's called the destination truck stop. A lot of them are here, living in their truck. There's really nowhere for them to go. I can't pay their bills for them, but I can, you know, I can be a listening ear, I can be a friend, and I can make them feel important while they're here. How long you been driving? 41 years. 41 years, always. Always coast to coast? Always, yes. You would say that trucking life has been good for you? If I had it to do over again, no, I wouldn't be a trucker. If you had to do it over again, you wouldn't be a truck driver? No way. The middle class man just struggles more and more every day. Got two sons, and I told him, don't, don't think about no truck. Another huge problem with being over the road isn't just, you know, like being away from the family. It isn't about the, you know, no time off or whatever. It's you have absolutely no interaction with anybody. There's a thing with prisoners where they become like institutionalized. Something similar happens to some of these truck drivers, and it's the older ones that you see more of it in. These guys that are 60, 55, 60, have been driving for 20, 30 years. You'll be sitting there with about five, six people, and you're all cutting up, eating dinner, you know, talking, having a good time. And this old guy will walk in, and he'll walk all the way to the back corner. And he'll sit in a booth by himself, away from everybody, and won't talk to nobody, he'll sit there, eat his dinner, and then get up and walk out. That's all he knows, is solitude. We go out to supply the America everything. You know, that's what my gratitude is, what I get out of it. That's what fills my heart. That's what keeps me going. Are you the are you the sole supporter of the income or does wife work? They just diagnosed her with lupus and first stage of dementia. So I spent my life out here doing good, you know, moving America and keeping everybody supplied. Now my wife of 39 years pretty soon ain't gonna know who I am. You know, what do you do? Get back in that damn truck and, and get driving, because the bills have got to be paid. People are made to do this, and there's people who's not. In a way, you have to lead a double life. You have a life when you're at home, but then it's like a separate life out here. And the bad part is, when something bad goes home, you have to live that life in that turmoil and then live it again out here until things stabilize. I think I'm going to run for a little bit this winter for Glenn. He said he had some pretty decent stuff coming up. Yeah. You know, he's got work anyway, so. Well, I guess that puts an answer to the rumor about 20 people getting laid off. Yeah. That's Mine one of the too. bad I had things, if you would, uh, with diabetes. Mm -hmm is your eyesight varies depending upon where your blood sugar is. Yeah. When you start any diabetes medicine, the freaking, what that does to your medical condition out here on the road with the medical card. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They can pull your medical card in a hurry. All right, a bowl of jelly. Oh, <laughs> that's all you get today, that's it. Just a bowl of jelly. I'm going to take your food away now, no? Yeah. Wow. Sauce? The basketball coach. Okay, and I'll be right back there, Burger. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the coffee pot. Please. Oh, but I have all kinds of struggles going on. I almost lost my son in August. He was in a he was in the hospital for two months. He got uh he was in a bad motorcycle accident. 
Family's always something you need help with. <laughs> you know, I hate to say this because it, uh, you know, make make the wife sound like a bad person. It isn't necessarily all her fault, but uh, one of the reasons I'm out here because it makes it easier. She used to drive, and she got sick, and things got pretty tough there for a while. It started in her tonsils and then went to, it moved to the lymph nodes in her neck and they had to do a full neck dissection on her. So she went through the, about the worst radiation and chemo you could do. Seven weeks of it, then, yeah. That was one of them, well, I got things, I tell you, I promise you. And it's, I mean, it still is. You came to the Lord when? I've probably attempted suicide half a dozen times. I tried to hang myself and they found me hanging from, from the door with a, a sheet, you know, wrapped around my neck. Well, you know, sometimes we have to be protected from ourselves. What scares me is not having the, the financial, you know, security, uselessness, worthlessness, um, not knowing what you're gonna do next. I'll go get things squared away with God and everything will be okay again. Well, who really knows when, when your number's up, when God says, that's it, I had enough, I'm bringing him up. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully he's bringing you up. Um, who knows what, you know, when, you, when your luck's gonna run out. That's, but man, I'm still willing to do it, you know? I'm, why? It's, it's nuts. It's nuts to want to do that. <laughs>